Welcome to Marvelous French, French lessons for those who are learning French or who would like to learn French. Welcome to another edition of the Closer Look series, where we look at native French materials for interesting grammar and vocabulary points. This is the final lesson of a three-part series where we look at an article and tweets regarding a Charlie Hebdo cartoon on the August 2016 earthquake in Italy. In part one, we looked at a French Huffington Post article. In part two, we looked at a series of tweets. And in this final lesson, we'll look at some additional tweets. Please be aware that the cartoon itself is controversial and the tweets contain very strong language. With that said, here's the Charlie Hebdo drawing entitled Seisma l'Italienne, Earthquake Italian Style, which compares Italian earthquake victims to pasta dishes. Someone by the name of Melville posted the drawing on Twitter in support of Charlie Hebdo. Let's take a look at some of the responses. So we have Pierre who says, Putain, mais c'est tellement bas, mec. C'est pas que c'est choquant, ça. On s'en tape. C'est juste que bah, c'est pas drôle, en fait. So in English, damn, that's really low, man. It's not that it's shocking. Who cares, really? It's just that, eh, it's not funny, really. So we have putain, which is actually a rather strong word. It literally means a whore, as in a very not nice way to refer to a prostitute, or sometimes to a woman in general, but can also be used as an exclamation meaning damn, hell, etc., which is how it's being used here. The expression putain can also be used with de, which means of, to intensify a word. For example, cette putain de voiture can be this damn car. Here, though, again, it's being used as an exclamation. Then we have, mais c'est tellement bas, mec, but that's really low, man. So, mec is slang for man, guy, dude. For example, c'est qui ce mec? Who's this guy? And then we have, c'est pas que c'est choquant, ça. It's not that it's shocking. On s'en tape. I could care less. Literally, one could care less. So, s'en tape is another bit of slang that means to not care about something. Other terms with similar meaning are s'en foutre, which is quite strong. And then you have a softer version of s'en foutre, which is s'en fiche. So, for example, je m'en tape, je m'en fous, je m'en fiche, all mean I don't care, I could care less. And so they all have a sort of nonchalant air about them. Then we have, c'est juste que, it's just that, bah, well, eh, c'est pas drôle en fait, it's not funny in fact. So en fait means in fact, actually, really. And notice the pronunciation, F-A-I-T, which in this case is a noun that means fact, can be pronounced fait in other instances, but not in this expression. We don't say en fait, we say en fait. So then we have PNG's response. Coco, je ne suis pas une vierge effarouchée, mais l'enculé des dessinateurs qui a pondu ça mérite gifle. So in English, this means something like, Hey bozo, I'm not a scared virgin, but the a-hole of a cartoonist who drew this deserves to be slapped. So literally we have coco, which is a pejorative word for a guy, as in jerk, chump, bozo. We have a lot of words for that in English. So in another context, coco can be a term of endearment, meaning darling, dear, but here it's used in the more negative sense of dummy, idiot. So then we have, je ne suis pas une vierge effarouchée, I'm not a scared virgin, where effarouchée means scared. So this is actually a reference to Melville's original tweet, which we looked at in part two of this lesson, where he basically says, no offense to scared virgins, meaning overly sensitive people, but I support Charlie Hebdo. So again, we have, I'm not a scared virgin, je ne suis pas une vierge effarouchée, mais l'enculé de dessinateur, the a-hole of a cartoonist. So, enculé is another extremely strong word that basically means a-hole, as in a total jerk. The word itself is pretty colorful. It comes from the verb enculé, E-N-C-U-L-E-R, which is a vulgar word meaning to sodomize. The root word here is cu, C-U-L, which is another strong word meaning but, B-U-T-T, derriere, etc. And then we have the prefix en, E-N, which means in, so literally in the derriere. <laughs> so that's the verb, 
And the noun, enculé, which we see here, ending in an E with an accent aigu, literally means someone who's been sodomized. But again, it's used as an insult, meaning a-hole, etc. And it's used here with de, enculé de dessinateur. So just as putain de intensifies a word, enculé de can be used in a similar way. So we have l'enculé de dessinateur qui a pondu ça, who produced this, who delivered this, who did this, meaning the cartoon. So we could say, who drew this? Now, pondu is the past participle, the past tense version of the verb pondre. Pondre literally means to lay, as in to lay an egg, but it can also mean to deliver or produce an article, a drawing, some sort of piece to a newspaper, and that's how it's being used here. And finally, we have mérite des gifles, so mérite, deserves, des gifles, some slaps. Un gifle is a slap, so deserves to be slapped. And Melville responds to Pierre, la drôlerie, les goûts, les couleurs, libre appréciation de chacun. Merci. So in English, comedy or humor, taste, colors, everyone's free to appreciate things as they wish. In other words, to each his own. So there's an expression in French, les goûts et les couleurs ne se discutent pas. Literally, taste, or we can say preference, and colors can't be argued with. So again, to each his own. There's no accounting for taste. Libre here means free. Appréciation is appreciation. De, of, chacun, each individual, and merci, thank you. And then Melville responds to PNG. Je me compte au fond un peu de votre avis, ami. Merci pour votre contribution. So in English we have, I kind of don't give a damn about your opinion, friend. Sarcastic smiley. Thanks for your feedback, or literally, contribution. So we have, je me compte fou de. We mentioned earlier that je m'en fous means I don't care. So je me compte fou just emphasizes the idea that I really don't care. So, ce contre foutre de means to not give a damn about. We have, I don't care, un peu, a little. So, I kind of sort of really don't care. De votre avis, about your opinion. Ami, a friend. Merci, thank you. Pour votre contribution, for your contribution. So now let's take a look at some grammar points here, or really they're kind of points on casual French. So in Pierre's first tweet here, there are a couple of negations using ne pas, which makes a phrase or a verb negative. So we have, c'est pas que c'est choquant, it's not that it's shocking, and c'est pas drôle, it's not funny. Now usually when we want to make something negative in French, we need to use the pair ne and pas and wrap it around our conjugated verb. But in casual French, the ne is often dropped. So Pierre doesn't write, ce n'est pas que c'est choquant, but just, c'est pas que c'est choquant. He dropped the ne. Same thing with, c'est pas drôle. Instead of saying, ce n'est pas drôle, he says, c'est pas drôle. So let's look at a few more examples of this. So, ne pas is a common negation, but there are others. Ne plus, for example, which means no more, not anymore. Ne jamais, which means never, not ever. And again, in casual speech, the ne in these negations is often dropped. So here we have, for example, je ne sais pas, I don't know. Je sais means I know. We put ne pas around the verb c'est, and we get je ne sais pas, I don't know. Now, in casual French, we drop the ne, which gives us je sais pas. And then in spoken French, a lot of times words can be run together and truncated. So that je sais pas becomes je sais pas, which can be further truncated to je sais pas. Another example we have here, je n'en peux plus, which is an expression that means I can't take it any longer. In casual speech, we can drop the ne, which gives us j'en peux plus. And in our third example, we have, tu n'as pas encore répondu? You haven't replied or you haven't responded yet. So again, we can drop the ne in casual speech. And when the subject is tu, you in formal singular, it's very common to also drop the u sound in tu. So we just get, t'as pas répondu? And we have a final example here. Ce n'est pas vrai. It's not true. 
We can drop the ne in casual speech, which gives us c'est pas vrai. So just a note here that ne, when followed by a vowel, a, e, i, o, or u, gets contracted to an apostrophe. Now this isn't casual, this is always the case for sound reasons. We also do the same thing with je, j, e, which means i, when it's followed by a vowel. It becomes j apostrophe. So we drop the ne, and if the subject is je, again, which means I, and the word that follows starts with a vowel, we're then going to truncate je to j apostrophe. So that gives us, for example, j'en peux plus, if we look at the second example there. Je n'en peux plus, when you drop the ne, changes to j'en peux plus. So we also see Pierre use the term bah, B-A-H, in his first tweet. Bah, c'est pas drôle en fait. Eh, well, it's not actually funny. So, ba is an interjection that can mean eh, or well, or so. And you'll also see other short words starting with b, such as bon, which literally means good, and ba, b-e-n, which is short for eh bien, used in the same way. And they can mean, again, well, er, eh, so. So, here we have some examples. Bon, on y va? So, should we go? As in, let's leave. Ben, c'est toi qui décide. Well, you decide. Ben, peu importe. Eh, doesn't really matter. Now, ben, again, B-E-N, which is short for eh bien, when used with oui or non, ben oui, ben non, can also be used in the sense of obviously, of course, depending on the intonation used, or it can be used to hesitate, again, depending on the intonation. So we have the example here, tu aimes la musique? Do you like music? And the response is, ben oui, of course I do. On the other hand, we have the example, tu vas l'appeler? Or you're going to call him or call her? Ben oui, meaning, um, I think so, I guess. And ban non can also be used in the same way to mean, of course not, ban non, or, uh, I don't think so, ban non. And finally, we can combine ban and bon into bon ban, which once again just means, well, so, um, so we have our example here, bon ban, j'y vais, well, I'm going. So these little terms just act as filler, as a way of introducing an idea, so you're not just abruptly saying out of the blue, I'm going. So now let's take a look at a final tweet. Now this is actually not a reply to Melville, but it just had some really interesting vocabulary, so I thought we'd take a look. Again, it is referring to the same Charlie Hebdo drawing. So we have, Charlie Hebdo, c'est le sale bof bourré qui fait des blagues molo molo toute la soirée avant de se prendre une baffe par une meuf. And we have my English translation here. Charlie Hebdo is like that drunken jerk who tells lame jokes all night before getting slapped in the face by some woman. So we have Charlie Hebdo, c'est le sale bof. Sal is dirty. And bof here means a jerk, a yokel, someone who's reactionary, ignorant, and unsophisticated. Bourré is slang for drunk. Qui fait des blagues, who tells jokes. Molo molo. So this is slang that means weak or lame here. Toute la soirée, all night, all evening, avant de, before, se prendre, getting, une baffe, a slap, par une meuf, by a woman. So meuf here is slang for woman. And just a quick note here. Uh, it looks like we have a little typo. So, uh, on the third line there, avant de, and after that first de, the second de should be se, S-E, se prendre. So, let's take a bit of a closer look at some of the key vocabulary here. We have un bof, which can mean a jerk, a yokel. Un bof can also be short for un beau frère, which means a brother-in-law or a stepbrother. We have bourré, which is slang for drunk. Other terms for drunk, which are less informal, are ivre or sous, 
which can be spelled either S-A-O-U-L or S-O-U with an accent circonflexe L. Then we have molo molo, which here means weak or lame. Sometimes you'll just see molo instead of molo molo, or sometimes molo will be spelled with a double L, but this comes from the adverb molement, M-O-L-L-E-M-E-N-T, which literally means softly, from the adjective mou, M-O-U, which means soft. So just as in English, soft can be literal or can sometimes have a negative connotation like it does here. Molo molo as in weak, not strong. Now in another context, molo can mean soft as in calm or carefully, like the word doucement in French. So you can say, il faut aller molo molo. You have to slow down. Don't rush. Take your time. But again here, it means weak. So then we have se prendre, which means to get, to receive, and une baffe, which means a slap. So we saw the word une gifle earlier, as in the cartoonist deserves une gifle, and that means the same thing, a slap. And then we have une meuf, which is slang for une femme, a woman. So this is actually a form of slang called verlon, which we'll briefly look at in a moment. So before we talk about verlon, Let's talk a bit about tu, T-O-U-T, used with the to mean all, as in all men, all aliens, all trees. So in the tweak we just looked at, we saw toute la soirée, all evening, literally all the evening. And in French, we can use this pattern with other nouns. We take tu, which means all, and combine it with the word the and a noun. The form of tu and the will both change to match the gender and number of the noun. So we'll have masculine, feminine, singular, and plural forms. Let's look at some examples here. We have toute la matinée, all morning. Matinée, which means morning, is feminine. The feminine form of tu is tout with an e, and we follow that with the feminine form of the, la. So toute la matinée. And we have more expressions here having to do with the time of day. Toute la journée, all day, where journée means day and is feminine. So we have toute la journée. Toute la soirée, as we saw, means all evening. Soirée means evening and is feminine. So toute la soirée. And finally, toute la nuit, all night, where nuit means night and is feminine. So toute la nuit. Then we have some expressions used with people. Tous les Français, all French people, where Français means French people and is masculine plural. So we're using the masculine plural form of tu, which is T-O-U-S, pronounced the same way, tu, followed by the plural form of the, which is les, L-E-S, so tous les Français. We have toutes les femmes, all women, where femme means women and is feminine plural. So we're using the feminine plural form of tu, which is tout, T-O-U-T-E-S, and the plural form of the, which is les. So, toutes les femmes. And then we have the expression tout le monde, which means everyone. So monde literally means world, W-O-R-L-D. So literally all the world. But in English, we say everyone, everybody. So monde is masculine singular, so we're going to use the masculine singular form of tu, T-O-U-T, and the masculine singular form of the, which is le, L-E. So tout le monde, everybody. Then we have the expression tout le temps, all the time. Temps, time, is masculine singular, and it does end in an S, but in this case it is singular. So we use the masculine singular form of tu, T-O-U-T, and the masculine singular form of the, which is le, L-E. So that gives us tout le temps, which again is all the time. So to summarize, we have T-O-U-T, tu, the masculine singular form, T-O-U-T-E, tout, which is the feminine singular form, T-O-U-S, tu, which is masculine plural, and T-O-U-T-E-S, tout, which is feminine plural. Now let's talk about verlon, which is a kind of French slang. So in the last tweet we looked at, we saw the word une meuf, which is verlon for une femme, a woman. 
So verlon is when you take a word and switch the syllables so that the last syllable becomes the first syllable and the first becomes the last. It's considered slang and informal, so it's used in casual settings. Let's take a look at the examples we have here. So we have une meuf, which again is une femme, a woman. Now we said that we switch syllables in verlon, but a lot of words only have one syllable. So in that case, if the word ends in a silent E, that E becomes part of a second syllable. So femme, woman, becomes femme. That gets inverted to me, fa. Now, oftentimes, with one-syllable words like this, the final vowel sound is dropped after the inversion. So me, fa becomes just meuf. Don't worry if it seems tricky. You don't have to go to the trouble of inverting these words yourself. An established set of words are already a part of Verlon, and you can find lists online or in books covering French slang. So we have some more examples here. Teubé, which is Verlon for bête, meaning dumb or stupid. Beur, which is Verlon for arabe, meaning Arab but more particularly refers to those in France with North African roots coming from Morocco, Algeria, or Tunisia. We have ouf, which is verlon for fou, meaning crazy. We have un keuf, which is verlon for un flic, which is slang for un policier, meaning a policeman or a cop. And then we have the word verlon itself, which is verlon for the word l'envers, which means backward, the reverse. And that brings us to the end of our lesson. If you found this lesson helpful, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And once again, this was Meredith with Marvelous French. And as always, à la prochaine. See you next time.